sorry. But don't understand it. It was always bingo in here on a Sunday night. I don't know what all this nonsense is about. Oh, never mind, Agnes. What is he anyway? A hypnotist. I believe he is. Oh, well, listen, it'll be a nice wee change. I will just go over it. So I thought you might be in tonight, sir. As indeed, I am. <laughs> you got a message for him, have you, uh, Just give him this, but uh, don't tell him who it's from. Not a word, sir. Not a word, Governor. Where will you be sitting, sir? Oh, my usual place. On my bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a card, sir. Quite a tonic. Another town, another show. It was Glasgow. It was... Saturday night. No, I tell a lie, it was Sunday. I had been on the road for about a year and I hadn't once regretted my decision to leave home. All that was behind me now. Or so I thought. Hello, Dobbin. Good audience. Got a package for you, Mr. Ferguson. Oh, thanks. Who's it from? Yeah, it's nobody's. Nobody. Oh, no. What's he doing here? Well, he's probably come to see you, sir. Sing. Keep him away, will you? <laughs> Don't you get on with your old dad, sir. <laughs> That was his father. Oh, hi, I saw him here 20 years ago. A gentle, funny man. Oh, a nice arse. Oh, Agnes. Patronise me, you bastards. <laughs> Daddy's here, quietly. <laughs> Blame it! It looks like something off of Doctor Who. My dad used to say that about anything. When you came home with a crap haircut and there was a band you liked on top of the pops. Blame me, that looks like something off of Doctor Who. Oh, great joke, Dad. <laughs> Get. Ooh, look at this. Like something off Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor, we come from the skinny bastard planet. Like <laughs> <laughs> something off Trumpton, actually. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the audience. We're going to take a wee journey. Not like in a car or anything, but a, but a real journey into the unknown. Now, what do we know about the unknown? <laughs> well, not very much. But if it is the unknown, then how can we know about it? We don't know. It's one of life's great enigmas. That's what we're going to study tonight. 
life's great enigmas, the great enigmas of life. Enigma number one, the unknown. Enigma number two, what does enigma mean? We don't know. Enigma number three, how do people in Hollywood movies, when they get hit with a blow dart, always get hit in the neck? We don't know. After me, children, we don't know. We don't know. Lovely. I like to pride myself, my audience, other people who voted don't know. <laughs> How do people in Hollywood movies get pleasure out of shagging so slowly? You might not know, but I know. Enigma number four. Why do comedians always sing? Of course you don't know. Enigma number five. What do you get when you fall in love? You get enough germs to catch pneumonia. And when you do, he'll never phone you. Imagine rhyming phonia with pneumonia. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to solve the unknown. Yes. That's what we're going to do. We're going to solve the unknown. And to do this, we have to go back in time. Back. Back. We don't have to do this with our hands, but... Back in time. To the dawning of human intelligence. I speak, of course, of our growth. Long life and house of growth, Smokey. Oh, I for breakfast. Mm. Smashing. Long, long ago, in a wee dark cave near our growth, there lived a brilliant genius who invented the wheel. Unfortunately, and the next cave was a horrible, grumpy wee Presbyterian minister. <laughs> wee sugarly walking stick and everything. Horrible wee grumpy Presbyterian minister. Inventing the wheel clap. <laughs> <laughs> no! What a mind! What vision to invent the wheel clap! To take the wheel, possibly the single greatest invention in history, and make a complete dog's ass of it! <laughs> what about applying the clamping technique to other great inventions? The telephone Tele clamp. Tele Television Tele clamp. clamp. I wish someone had invented the father clamp. God, he was relentless. With Dad, it was hard to tell where show business stopped and real life began. You go, you go. Oh, come on, Stanley. Gaston's not a proper word. Yes, it bloody is. How Mum put up with him for all those years, I'll never know. Fergus, when are you going to get me out of this? I've got things to do. Ouch! Oh, ouch, that's a good word. Oh, you see, H. Craig will be home for his tea in a minute. Oh, it's always Craig this, Craig that, and always bloody Craig. Right, everybody. You can all have a good laugh. I failed my exam. Craig, will you come and let me out of this torture temple? Yes, Mum. Thank you, dear. And steady. Slowly does it. Yeah. Ooh. 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 You nearly had my nose off then. Oh. Well, what is it you failed this time then? Juggling. Failed? You failed your elementary juggling? This cannot be. Those clubs have been tossed down from generation to generation. No one's ever failed with them. Well, I have. Practice. Practice is the mother and father of comedy. comedy. Just can't do it. Look. Oh, come. You're 92% there. All you need to do is hone your technique. It's not just the juggling. I can't tap dance, I can't unicycle, I can't even pull a bloody rabbit out of a hat. Don't worry, Craigie. We lost four rabbits before your dad mastered that one. Now give your mother a kiss. Take your anorak off and sit down. We'll see what the tea leaves have to say. 
Come and play some Scrabble. I was playing with this chap, but uh, he's a complete dummy. <laughs> get it, get it. Sit down, Greg. <laughs> Oops, pardon you. Don't keep on at him. It's no good, Dad. I'm not cut out for all this. Of course you're cut out for it. It's, it's in your blood. One of these days you'll inherit the comedy shoes of your great, great grandfather. Dad, to be honest, I don't find any of this stuff very funny. I don't think I've got a sense of humour. You don't need a sense of humour. I never had one and nor did your father before me. What you need is a sense of duty. Duty, graft and props. Look after the props and the laughs will look after themselves. According to the tea leaves, he's barking up the wrong tree. Maybe this isn't the right line of show business. Oh, or... nonsense. He's just going through a phase. Look, Dad, I've tried to please you for the past 20 years. I can do no more. All right, son. If you hate juggling that much, forget it. Let's try the knife throwing instead. Mother, go and stand against the wall in a skimpy outfit. Oh, my God. Inventions are very important, ladies and gentlemen. See, you've learned something as well. Isn't that lovely? Inventions are very important. War, for example. Not a great invention in itself. But war has been responsible for many great inventions. Jet engines, rockets to the moon, radar, mustard gas, lovely bee invention, have it on your steak. <laughs> it's like Orson Welles said in The Third Man. I don't really have a beer gut, I'm acting. <laughs> Some of this is new to me, so you must allow me a smile. <laughs> like Oswald said in The Third Man. Under the Borgias. Probably the best lager in the... No. Under the Borgias, probably the most... <laughs> it's like something off Doctor Who there. <laughs> Under the Borgias, probably the most evil and warlike regime in history. We had the flowering of the Renaissance in Italy. And yet, in Switzerland, which has been neutral for as long as anyone can remember, what did they ever come up with? The big and cuckoo clock. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing a wee bit there, but that's what he said. <laughs> now pardon me, Orson! Pardon me, Orson, baby! But I think you've been a wee bit unkind there. Because the Swiss did come up with the most brilliant military invention of all time. The awesome, horrifyingly effective weapon of destruction. The Swiss Army pen knife! <laughs> back, back, you fools, it may go off! <laughs> Actually, it's lucky the Swiss are neutral, isn't it? Imagine what would happen if the tanks did start rolling into Switzerland. <laughs> Looks like we're done for, Corporal Heidi. <laughs> you think you're a Swiss name, you bastards! <laughs> Looks like we're... <laughs> Looks like we're done for, Corporal Heidi. Would you like to share my Toblerone before we die? <laughs> Don't worry, Private Alpin, my friend. <laughs> I have my Swiss Army penknife with me. <laughs> See, blade, corkscrew, bottle opener, cuckoo clock, wee wiggly thing, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> I could have sworn there was an anti-tank missile in here somewhere. 